Hey, and welcome back. Today we're taking a trip down to Milwaukee, Wisconsin to visit my good friend Josh Breslow. Josh is an artist, musician, and craftsman who combines his unique skill sets to upcycle forgotten drums into instruments of art. Josh was kind enough to have me over to the Breslow Drum Company headquarters to showcase some of his beautiful drums, share his story, and walk me through his process for creating these instruments. I hope you enjoy this video, and if you do, make sure to give it a like and subscribe to my channel to stay up to date on future video releases just like this. So without any further delay, let's check out Breslow Drum Company. Mr. Mike Malone. Hey, buddy. Hey, good How to see are you? you? Thanks for coming over. Yeah, thanks Welcome for having to me. to my house. How was your trip? Good. On eventful from Oshkosh to Franklin. Yeah, yeah. Excited to be here. Good. Thanks for coming by and checking everything out. Yeah. Take you downstairs. All right. Here we go. So this is the bar and showroom. Nice. Yeah. So I've lived here for 15 years and I've been doing this about four or five years or so. Okay. This is the slow accumulation of all of my projects and Yeah, pieces. yeah. This is a, a beautiful showroom for uh, yeah. all this the is, work you've done. Yeah, this is this is the hangout spot, definitely. Uh, gives me a chance when they come in from the shop to bring them in here and look at them, you know. Um, and then I bring them in the studio and I play them. On my drive down, I was remembering how I first became familiar with your work. Yes. Was uh, we both were fans of the podcast by Bearded Drums. Yes, yes, good friends of us. And you had submitted one of your projects yeah. to be shown on the podcast, yes. and it involved a bunch of uh, yardsticks. Yeah. <laughs> and I saw a bunch of those were from Menards. Menards. And instantly knew that uh, we must have been somewhat close to each other. Yeah, it's right up the street. I mean, it, it, I saw it, that driving in, yeah. It's right there. Yeah, I wish so. I lived that close to my right. house. Well, it's a blessing and a curse, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I also uh, have music go around, and that's where a lot of this comes from. You know, a lot of this is yeah. is upcycle. You know, that's a big part of all of this is is taking those old kits, you know, that are almost garbage or, you know, kind of cast off or you know, somebody's practice kit and, and redoing it and refinishing it and, you know, giving it a new purpose. I like to consider my work like I'm just parked right in the intersection of art and instrument. <laughs> that's a great way to put it. And that's where I'm at. You know, I, um, I don't want this to be a museum, you know, like I play every one of these. Um, you know, they're not sculptures, they're, they're instruments. Um, yeah. Well, and, you know, like myself and many other drummers who tinker with instruments and start modifying, you know, the playing is the background that brings us there and maybe wanting something different or yeah. having an old drum that yeah. just sits around. Yep. But um, your background's unique too, because you're also have a, a career yeah. as an art teacher yeah. and an artist. Right, yes. Yeah, I'm an art teacher. Um, I teach fourth through eighth grade art. I've done that for almost 20 years. I've done, uh, done that in New York City and, um, I've done that in uh, Wisconsin, like in inner city environments and, or, um, you know, um, suburban environments, uh, all sorts of different kids, all sorts of different schools. And um, yeah, so all day I'm teaching art, you know, I, I live art, um, helping kids create and express themselves, really important to me. And just the history of it all, like just being able to explain to a kid about the Starry Night or, you know, um, Picasso's, you know, blue period or something that, you know, you have all this knowledge and you just share it and you can see their excitement. So, um, yeah, art is definitely, having that background is helpful. Um, I also have a bachelor's degree in painting and sculpture from UW Oshkosh. And I have a master's degree in advanced metal working from Marywood University. So I have a lot of art education. Um, I did a lot of welding and fabricating be before I got into this. Um, custom like gates and fences and sculptures and stuff like that. Um, so that helps with this. So I can, you know, I have, you know, a welder out in the shop so I can cut things. I feel comfortable doing a lot of that type of work. Um, so I think all that was just a foundation for, you know, um, what you're seeing right here. The way that this all, you know, sort of got started was just um, being in a, in a folk band, um, like a rock Americana band. 
and just taking my equipment to our, our guitar player's house and just schlepping that stuff down his tight, you know, stairwell and and setting it up and taking it down. I was like, I need something smaller. Like this is just not working. Yeah. So um, I cut it. I took a, ki uh, a 16 by 16 floor tom and made it into a kick, and um, that was that was it. That was like the first sort of modification that I ever made. And then it was just a black kit. And somebody commented in the band, they were like, wow, it looks so plain. That's not like you. And I thought about that for like two weeks, you know? So then I uh, started to think about papers and wraps. And then that just, you know, opened up like, you know, just a whole doorway of, of different projects. Um, one of the first ones was actually the bottle cap kit. I think that was maybe. Oh, this is one of the first ones I remember yeah. seeing too. Yeah, this is probably the third piece I ever did. And it was only supposed to be a kick drum. So I was really in into uh, making a kick drum for our bass player, you know, kind of like the Lumineers, you know, they have a kick drum that just sits up yeah, on the yeah. stage and I like that. So I made this and um, it's actually two bottle caps. Sometimes people don't notice that and they all move around. Oh, there. So yeah, there's yeah. a flat one. And then there's my two favorite beers, which is uh, Leinen Kugel from, from Wisconsin and Yingling, which is from the East Coast. That's where I'm from. Um, and then every uh, screw is also painted. So I painted them all to match as well. So once I did the kick, I, it, I, you know, immediately before it was even done, I knew I was like, this has to be a drum set. So then I did, yeah. I did this Tom and the whole kit was an MIJ that I got back in New York for free. That somebody just gave to me. So I did this Tom and I did a floor Tom. And then of course I got another drum and then I did one more and then I uh, regained my sanity and decided I'm um, never gonna do that again because you know each one had to get pounded and, and it, it was so I much imagine, yeah. yeah so much yeah. repetition and to get them all on there like evenly and and um, keep them on there. The part I find really unique about this kit is obviously the bottle caps creates a sonic effect, but you also made this bottle cap strap that can be is that laced in there like yeah. it can come out. Yeah, yeah, it's it's actually just a piece of like okay. an old kick drum, oh, like okay. an old head that I just cut, and then this is like that um, spray. What do you call that? You know, you put that on like the bottom of a tool to, to hold a handle, oh, like a spray yeah, yeah. dip type stuff. Plasti dip, yeah. Or something, yeah. So I didn't want it to scratch up, but yeah, it's all just sort of laced in there, and then it's just locked in there like that. This was the record kit. This also started as just the kick. Um, it was also just like learning, like how do I bend these records? Like how does that work? Yeah, yeah. Um, how, well, how and I think the first time I came out here last year to visit you, you were in the process of building. Oh this yeah, kid. yeah, that's right. We talked about this. Yeah. And I also look at like the hoops a lot. A lot of my work, I really take some time to look at like what goes in these hoops. Um, I feel like it's an important little piece, you know? Like yeah. it really ties in the design. Yeah, the record thing was really difficult. Um, so when I got to the Toms, I wanted to make a whole kit out of it, but I was so aggravated with the painting process, you know, and the and the all of the like adhesion that I needed to get to get the to get them to stay like that. So then it just dawned on me I could just use the record covers. Yeah, you know, like those are just as cool, and those are just old cardboard. Um, so I can, you know, I could spray adhesive them on there. You know, I have a variety of methods to get them on there, and then those were cool. I also like on this one too, maybe, you know, mostly just for the show element, but these record symbols and yeah. on top of the heads, just yeah. to, just for well, fun, and here's yeah. kind of an example of uh, the process of bending one a little bit. Yeah. So this is one that I, that I bent that, um, just, just didn't, you know, like I, it just got too messed up. You can see it got wavy, um, too much heat. So yeah, I have a, I have a whole bunch of these, you know? I got this guy at the Chicago Drum Show. It's a 17 inch drum, which is unusual. And uh, I collaborated with my really good friend, Troy Yanakopoulos. And he's a really, he's also an art teacher, a local dude here um, in Milwaukee. Um, and he's done a few of these painted um, heads for me. Um, this is one that I just absolutely love. And this was his design. So I collaborate with him. Collaboration is really important to me to work with other artists and yeah. other people. And so there's a few of these that are collaborations. Um, this this is when uh, Visionary Drums was still going. And boy, do I miss them because they made these beautiful decals that um, 
you know, you cover your drums with. So this was just sort of a outer space kind of theme. Um, and they're no longer in business, unfortunately. These are both just little kicks, really good like coffee shop kind of stuff. Sometimes people ask me like, are these kids kits? And like, yeah, I'll totally make a kid's drum set. Both of these were floor toms. Um, I don't ever redo these ideas, but I got so much feedback on um, the cards that um, there's another one in the making, like a larger kit. So many people commented on that, you know, and I'm like, all right, I, I, like I said, I don't really redo things. I like to just go from idea to idea to idea. Um, I don't like dipping back into the old ones, but that one you will see again. This was all restoration and collaboration with Troy with the painted base head. He did a great job with that. Oh well, yeah, and this is very much in the style of those old painted base heads you'd see with uh, like a nature. Yeah, definitely. And mountains. Yep. And Yep. Um, I got the sticker kit here. A friend of mine gave me this huge box of, her dad was a, uh, um, a, a uh, engineer for like the city of Milwaukee County, an electrician. So he used to label all those like electrical boxes for the city oh, okay. with these stickers. And um, I just sort of went to town and I have, this is a whole kit. There's a floor Tom and Tom. Yeah. That, I think there's, that's on my Instagram. Um, yeah, so this was just like a lot of, I guess I call that like a rock kit, you know? <laughs> like, yeah. Um, and it was just a, you know, a lot of time, you know? I, I like repetition, I find comfort in it. A lot of people don't, but like the bottle caps and things like that, there's something soothing to me about that repetition. It just makes me feel, you know, good. <laughs> yeah. Um, Olympic kit is, is one of the newer ones. I just finished that up over the summer, so it's probably like two months old. I think it was uh, Mapex Voyager. I have two of these. And um, this one sounds really great. I am a huge Olympic fan. I grew up as a swimmer and um, the Olympics was like the only venue, you know, like the, the grand stage yeah. for swimmers. So I always loved the Olympics. And I also spent um, a lot of time with the uh, hoop inlay. And I really was conscious to, uh, you know, get the years and some of the different um, uh, early Olympic venues, you know, Stockholm and Amsterdam and Paris and... Oh yeah, so there's a deliberate theme with the yeah, I really, pieces well, the, you're using. Yeah, actually this one, they kind of go in order. Th these are the old, you know, these are the oldest um, Olympics on the front and then it kind of goes up into the 70s and 60s. Here's the really early ones. Here's 1908, 1928, 1912. They're not in order, but they're, you know, kind of in order and then um, kind of picks up over here in 1948. Um, so yeah, I love the history of the Olympics. I think it's a beautiful thing. And um, so I just wanted to capture that. One other thing about your drums that, uh, you know, people who watch my channel know I have an affinity for skinnier drums yeah. or shallow depth. Definitely, me too. And uh, your bass drums seem to have a trend, at least on a number of them. Of yeah. Yep. Cut down depths. Definitely. And you know, that started in the beginning with, which was more just like a practical thing. Like, oh, this drum is pretty crusty on the back end here. So let me uh, just cut this off, you know, or, or in the beginning it was like, I have two ideas. I can make two kicks out of this if I cut it in half. Yeah. So yeah. Like, that's how it started. And then, you know, just referencing, you know, drums, you know, early drums to me, like they're all, they're all flat, you know, they're like 14 inches deep. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think like you were saying too, uh, from the front of the stage, you wouldn't notice the depth of a kick. Right. I find for me, I'm, I'm not a big dude and I'm not a heavy hitter at all, that they're more responsive for me, for the type of music that I'm playing too. You know? Yeah. Like folk, Americana, rock, I don't need this big thing, so. Yeah, here's a collaboration I did with um, this artist in, in Boston named Savage. She's a great painter. Um, I cut down the shells and sent them to her, and then she did this beautiful artwork on it. Sort of like a mini kit. Um, this is actually the kit drum. Oh, sorry, got to paint the inside, and then it's just like a little snare, and then these these are the toms. So it's sort of like just like a little like micro kit. I've always yeah. wanted to do like these, you know, like a little tiny kit. Yeah. And this is the kick drum, and it, you know, it sounds good. Yeah. Cool. Corduroy kit. This one was one of my earlier ones. I've done a few different like types of fabric and I've played this one probably a dozen times. It's great for coffee shop, like singer songwriter, acoustic playing. It 
it, it's sort of muffled and uh, Tom is a concert Tom, so it can tune that up really high. And I've had this one a few years and I, I also look at like the collar of the, of the drum. Yeah. You know, the drum head. A lot of people don't, don't, I look at that as an opportunity, you know, um, I can paint that, I can, I can match that, you know, I could use that little space. Yeah. And, um, you know, I'm sure uh, Remo and Evans are gonna steal this idea from me, but <laughs> I've always thought that they should offer like a few different colors rather than just that sort of silver. Uh, this is my snare collection. These are, are my snares that I, you know, just sort of upcycled. This one's cool. This is, uh, this goes with the other corduroy one. So this is a corduroy wrap. Oh yeah, and then you have a uh, denim inlay yes. on the hoop here. Thanks for noticing. Yeah, waste. And a pocket dampener. Um, I just rewrapped, this was that Pearl M80. Of course it was in black and I didn't like that, so I just rewrapped it. It looks like fabric, but it's actually uh, a paper that I get from Japan. This was just a shell that I kind of uh, got my own hoops and kind of redid. This matches my map kit. This goes with the tarot card one. This goes with the uh, sticker deal. This one seems so out of character for yeah, you. Yeah, right, right. It's so yeah. tame and, and, and understated. For sure, and it's like one that I play the most. Yeah. <laughs> this one, um, one of my favorites. I uh, collected the posters for like a year um, and they're vintage circus posters and I got them at this, um, at Wilmont at this like huge flea market, which is sort of like near Illinois. And um, so I collected the posters from this guy and just waited for like a year or two. And then I finally just put the whole thing together. And this was the first one where I actually matched the design and the hoop with like the graphics on the drum. Which was, yeah. you know, it's like it has this like kind of poster starts over and I was able to like catch the tiger's mouth in the, uh, in the inlay, which was really challenging to do. And that was the first time I did that. Some of these um, I made during the pandemic um, when I was home um, and I wasn't teaching. Well, I was teaching. I was definitely teaching, <laughs> but I wasn't teaching in front of students. I was just, you know, doing online lessons and that was a really challenging time for everybody. Uh, but I did have a lot of time to work um, on my, my kits in the evening, um, sometimes early in the morning. And I really wanted to take on something big, you know, like something over the top, you know, at that time, because I just needed like a distraction. So I, I've been saving these sticks for like 25 years and um, just decided like, all right, let's go. Like it's gonna be the stick kit. Um, so the way that I, I did it is that they're, they're kind of, they're not all like, you know, drilled on there. There's actually a rope that runs through and kind of loops them all together. Oh, I don't think okay. I see it, but like. Yeah, yeah, so right they. There. So like each section is like its own little, you know, piece. And then I'll just screw in like two parts of it so it still moves around a little bit. And I also try to put the sticks in order as much as I could. So like if they were a pair, you know, I kept them together um, or at least by brand or like the top and the bottom. This was really hard to make. Like I would never do this again. Um, <laughs> every time, especially like with the floor tom, every time I would go to put the head on there, one stick would, would just be sticking out, you know, just that much and I'd have to yeah. go in and shave it. And, and you know, things were just binding and locking and it, it just, it was so difficult, but you know, it just represents a lot to me because I remember all the sticks. I put a brush on here and, you know, um, I try to mount these in the front just to, you know, use the, the front of the drum to be creative too. I just played this one with uh, my group Logan Avenue Alley Band. Um, that was at a farmer's market in Wisconsin in like the hipster neighborhood here, like in Milwaukee. And, and it was so perfect. It was the perfect sound. Um, the drums all go on snare stands because they're so small. And it was a great project, you know, it really represent Wisconsin, kind of had that like farmer's market or like a bar kind of feel. And then I represented the uh, area code here with the 414. So th this one was great. You know, I also got a chance to um, use some old, you know, hardware and screws that I had, and then also try to paint them too to match. So the oh, wow. screws 
yeah. as much as I could, you know, sort of match the drum. So if like the lettering was black, I tried to paint the screws black. This was also an older one. Um, this was like an MIJ. I think I got the kit for $50. Yep, I got the kit for $50 with those nice heads on it. Um, at Music Go Round, and then I cut the concert toms down. I took a trip to Cuba with my family, and we did a cruise, and one of my fondest memories in, in life was, was us snorkeling, and we were all holding hands underwater, my two daughters and my wife, and it's just beautiful, and it was just probably the best moment of my life. And when I came back, I found this paper and it was just like, it just represented like Cuba, the cruise, sort of that yeah, whole yeah. underwater like experience, you know, we're holding a little seahorse, you know, it was, it was, it was perfect. So um, yeah, this, this one I've played a, a few times too, and it, it plays really nice. Like it's really loud and with the concert toms, it's just like rings out. This is a shell, my friend, who does like automotive stuff um, recently sprayed for me. So you'll see that soon. This is um, some wood burning that, I, that I've that um, i done for years and, and I'm working on doing a whole kit like this. Cool, so this is where I play and where I have more drums. <laughs> This is, I think we talked earlier about like one of my first kits. This was one of the very first ones, um, which was the map kit. And there's a few different versions of it. I have some alternative drums and then this kick drum. So it was sort of my go-to kit with my last group, the Watchbirds. Um, the map look was like, you know, the kit that I played for, for them. You know, it, it felt like that was the right look and everything. So that was pretty cool. And. Uh, this is a painted um, bass drum head by Troy M. Coppolis. This is embossed leather. I actually um, recorded an album using this kit with the singer-songwriter Dan Krell. Um, and there's the toms there. Here's the fine art kit. This was also one of the first ones. So these are all famous artists. Paul Clay, DeMuth, um, Van Gogh. 1776, I mean, I played that once on 4th of July morning. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, like, I bet that was a hit. That was like the perfect drum kit to have. So yeah, this one, you know, for the right occasion is just perfect and sounds great too. And this was also just like an upcycle kit. I think I got for like $70. Um, this was also, you know, one of my pandemic pieces, as you could probably tell. And uh, I work as a, like I said, I work as an art teacher. Um, so I have access, you know, I have this like bucket of these broken rulers because kids are creative and they're awesome, but they're super destructive too. It's like a puppy, you <laughs> yeah. know? So I like, have a lot of broken stuff and I don't ever throw nothing away. So it was like, I had this like bucket of these broken rulers and then one day it was just like ruler kit, you know? So yeah, I mean, a lot of these move too, which is kind of neat. And I try to use, you know, different types of rulers and really just like push that whole like theme as far as I could. Here are, this was an old vintage cloth, you know, one of those tape measures that you pull out and I, you know, I wrap the uh, inner hoop with that and I did that in here as well. Like I said, a lot of these move. And then for the front, um, same thing. This is just like one solid piece and it's on the back of a drum head. So I use the, the head, you know, to kind of help stabilize it and it just floats right in there. And then um, I call this like the blue kit, you know, it's all sort of blue and, you know, has the fish and sort of that underwater theme. Cool, so that's the whole showroom and That's everything. And test site. Shout out to my wife too for letting me have all the space to do this. It's one of the reasons I bought this house was for this shop. Um, when I saw that this was a, this was a part of the property, um, I was like, let's do this. Like to have a place to work like this, that's just right, you know, yeah. like 150 feet from my house is, I'm so fortunate.
Yeah, so this is the workshop. Um, this is where drums are stored and cut and put together. I don't do a lot of work in the house. Yeah. Pretty much, I'd say 90% of what happens um, with Breslow Drum Company happens in this space, definitely. So here, yeah, here's a kit I'm working on, you know, right now. It's taken a little while, a little bit longer than normal, but it's definitely coming along. I've been collecting the posters also for probably like a year or two just to get all the right sort of material. Um, a friend of mine who was moving to Chicago and he's like, do you want it? I was like, yeah, <laughs> he just gave it to me. So I think sometimes things start like this too. I think this is something that just sort of was born probably about a week ago at this uh, flea market thing. And I was like, oh, these, these old like seed bags. I think these were like a dollar a piece or something. And just felt like, yeah, you know, like I have experience wrapping things like this. Um, so yeah, you'll, you'll see this next in the future. I think I've already kind of fit some of this together and I'll do the same, you know, inlay within the hoop. And I do keep a bunch of drums around. Um, it's like a painter that needs plenty of canvases, you know? Yeah. So um, I always like to make sure that I have stuff. So when I get an idea, I don't want lack of drum to stop the idea, you know? So it's like, let me stock up. So, um, and these are all drums, believe it or not. All of these drums right here were given to me at the St. Louis Drum Show, which I did uh, last year. It was like, the show was over and this guy came up to me, he's like, he's like, you, 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 you'll do something great with this. And he just gave them to me, like, here you go. So that was pretty cool. Um, and then I keep a bunch of storage drums and things sort of up on the rafters here too, whenever I need pick something apart or, you know, pull something apart. Yeah, that is, uh, that's become the problem for me is keeping everything and people giving me drums, but finding a place to put it all until I can right. tackle using it. This space functions great, but then when it gets to be, you know, about January and it's like, you know, 20 below outside, a lot of my work stops, you know, it's just, some of it is dictated by the weather because things just don't work when it's that cold, you know? Yeah. <laughs> things don't, you know, um, products don't work, varnishes don't set up. Um, yeah. So I've learned that, you know, I learn like when I can work and then when I need to stop because I've ruined projects being out here in the freezing cold because I'm stressed out and I want to make something and, and then yeah. it's too cold and, and something doesn't stick or something doesn't work, so. Well, so last year you were talking about the St. Louis drum sure. show. Yeah. That was your first time, first time ever bringing these drums to yeah. a, a yeah. proper drum show to yeah. showcase. Yeah, yeah, that was cool. Um, I met Dave Weckl. Um, I got a lot of good feedback and um, started to just cut my teeth in that community. Um, just knowing, you know, meeting the other vendors and, and meeting other people and and just gaining confidence. Well, and this past year was the first time you've been at the Chicago Drum Show. Yeah, yeah, that was big. That was a big audience. I mean, I met Bunny E. Carlos and Randy Rainwater and so many, I mean, Steve Maxwell and Steve Maxwell Jr. I got, I got to be in the video. It was, it was, um, it was a great experience because I, you know, being from Milwaukee, I'm only, you know, like an hour, an hour and 20 minutes away from Chicago. So go, I've been going to the show. I've been going, that was my, probably my fifth time going, but having a booth was just incredible. Um, people were great. The drum community was great to me. Um, people were interested in my work. Um, I was nervous, you know, but it was cool. It was a cool experience. I saw you there. You made your yep. video, which was great. And you're a big part of that too. So thanks for that. It's been fun to watch your drum company and the drums you make have a bigger impact on the world than when it was just, you know, a few of us watching that podcast and sure. chiming sure. in. So yeah. If anybody wants to get in touch with you about, uh, sure. do you do take on custom Definitely. commission yes. projects? A lot, of the, a lot of this is commission work. So if you have an old drum set or you want one of these drum sets or you have an idea or you just want to talk about how to do it, you know, I'll help you do this stuff. You know, um, uh, my website is breslowdrumcompany.com and then I'm also on Instagram at breslowdrumcompany. So okay. you can 
find me there and you know we could collaborate uh, I, I i get a lot of messages just from people that are like how do you get the paper on there what, what product did you use you know like yeah. how did you cut this you know that sort of thing so i, I have no problem sharing information um you know with the drum community um and if anybody out there has an idea you know you want to you got something <laughs> something weird or you want something you know really unique um i create instruments of art thanks for uh, hosting me out here today and getting a chance to share your story a little bit yeah i greatly appreciate it my friend all right i'll all see right. you next time peace out